All right, guys, so I'm back here um, finishing the day, day 36 of the $100,000 challenge, down $3,930. A very frustrating day. I was not getting really clean resolution on any of the trades I took. Uh, one of the trades that I took, SGY, uh, with 10,000 shares, I was up about $3,000, didn't take the profit. I was looking for a bigger move, ended up turning into a loss. One of the things that um, you know, I've tried to avoid doing. Uh, for the most part, you know, I, I tried to keep the stop tight at break even. We dropped down to the whole dollar. My average was 708. We dropped down to seven dollars, and I was kind of like, well, let me just give this a second. And then when I hit the market order to, you know, to bail out with 10,000 shares, I got slippage. So ended up being $2,100 loss, which is just um, incredibly irritating. Uh, and then that was followed by a thousand dollar loss on PHMD and a thousand dollar loss on AAOI, which uh, both of them were frustrating. AAOI may be more frustrating because I had the right idea and it ended up running two points after I got out. But you know, this is the luck of the draw. It wasn't a clean breakout, it was the right thing for me to do to take the loss. Um, I was a little early on my entry. So for those of you watching on Facebook, you can see there's my PL today down 3930. Uh, so I started the day with 76,750 bucks uh, in the $100,000 challenge. And obviously on um, Monday, I'll be uh, you know $4,000 lower than that. So around 72,000. The good news is that I still have a net profit on the week of about $6,000. Last week I made 20,000, so this week making 6,000 is definitely a smaller week. But um, you know, at the same time, this is part of trading. Some weeks are going to be really good. Some weeks are going to be a little bit slow. Uh, as long as you're, you know, moving in the right direction, that's what's important. And um, because this is the end of the week, I'm going to break down my weekly stats, uh, and then after that, we'll go into the recap of uh, today's trades. So. Uh, I'm going to go here into Trader View and just show you uh, my stats. This is up through um, uh, this is up through yesterday. It does not include today's losses. Those will get imported on um, on Monday. So before the loss today, the four thousand dollar loss, I was up uh, had a profit of about seventy six thousand dollars. Largest gain uh, since I started this challenge ten thousand. Largest loss fifty five hundred. Uh, commissions have been uh, 2,000 plus ECN fees, 3,900, so about $6,000 in commissions and ECN fees, uh, with 79% accuracy. So really pretty solid accuracy. Profit loss ratio is not good because of the fact that uh, the losses I've had have been pretty big. I mean, they have been. I've had 80 winners and 21 losses, but those 21 losses have all been uh, fairly brutal. So you can see here, for those of you um, on Facebook, this is where um, things are looking for the $100,000 challenge. So I guess as of today, I'll be about 72% of the way there, down from 77%, but that's okay. Now, if we look at the overview here, uh, top left, uh, this is the overview for the last 30 days. Um, I'll just change it to 60 days. And you can see here how I had, you know, the very beginning of the challenge, really small days, $187, you know, 150, 150, 153, like small winning days. And then finally, I got that day where I surged up, made 1700 bucks. You know, I had finally got a really good day. Uh, a little bit of a smaller day, another big day. Uh, and then I got this day that really just opened up the account, that $7,000 winner. But it was followed by my first red day. I got a little overconfident. Bounced back aggressively, had a $15,000 winning day. And so you can see here, uh, in total, I've had now, today will be the sixth red day. So when you look at the P&L, you, know, you see these moves up, a little bit of a pullback. Uh, another move up, a bit of a pullback. A move up, pullback, move up, and this will be a pullback. And that's what almost every equity uh, curve looks like for any trader. You move up and you pull back. So uh, in the last five or six days of trading, I had about $15,000 of profit. 
and now in the last uh, two days I've given back 4,500. So you know that's kind of like three steps up if each step is 5,000 and uh, one step back and I can handle that. So that's sort of where I'm at with my stats here for um, you know the month. Well, this is since January 1st. So that gives me confidence even in uh, the shadow of a red day. Yes, this is a red day. I don't like having red days. Nobody does. But if you're going to try to aggressively grow an account from $500 up to $100,000, you've got to take risks. And sometimes, you know, luck is not going to be on your side. The markets are not going to be on your side, and you're going to take some losses. Uh, having said that, there are, of course, things that I can do and that every trader can do to minimize those losses as much as possible. So we have to understand risk. Every single trade that I take carries risk. And there are some days where uh, the market is going to be, it's just simply a riskier environment for me to try to trade in. And I think today was a riskier environment. And that's probably uh, exemplified in the fact that I'm red on four out of the five names that I traded. Right. And this is what I talk about a lot. When I'm when I'm hot, uh, you know, I'm I'm green on six out of seven names or seven out of seven names. And when I'm off and just not feeling it, I'm red on almost everything. So, you know, today's a day where I was aware of that trend that I was already red on, you know, two out of three names. Took a trade on PHMD. And I'll break down the trades, but you know, these last two trades, PHMD and AOI, both $1,000 losses, I actually didn't think I would lose that much on either of them. On both of them, I thought they would be small winners or maybe small losses, and they just kind of got away from me. And maybe that's because today just wasn't a great day to be trading. So I could have minimized my loss today by not taking those additional trades. Um, for all of 2016, I traded with a max loss of $1,000, which uh, meant not that I wouldn't have losses bigger than 1000 because I did, but it meant that if I was down more than 1000 I couldn't take an additional trade. My account had a restriction from my broker. And now, since I've been kind of swinging for the fences and having these really big P&L swings, I've uh, increased that max loss to 5000 uh, and, and I think that that's, that's fine. I've proved on, on one occasion so far that I can trade from in the red uh, back up into the green or that I can trade from in the red to, you know, not as badly in the red. And that's definitely, um, you know, a good thing. Actually, I did that yesterday as well. I've done that twice. I did that uh, last Wednesday, the 15th, and I did it yesterday, the 23rd. Both of those days, I went kind of deep into the red and then worked my way back out. I didn't get out 100% of the way. I closed both those days red, but I did reduce the loss. And so I tried to do that today, and today I made the loss a little bit bigger, but I didn't, um, you know, I, I kept it within reason, and I think that that's, that's fine. So to go over um, the trades from today, uh, you know, I was a little bit hesitant this morning because I really didn't see anything on the watch list that I liked that much. We had PULM. Uh, which was my best trade of the day. Uh, really, this was the only trade that was good, was clean, and that I would stand behind and say, yeah, I would take that trade again. Long over 420, right? Pre-market highs. Actually, it was just, we had a spike here, but uh, resistance here on the daily from yesterday's high. Got in at 420, 5,000 shares. Sold it on this spike up. Very clean, easy trade, no stress, 720 bucks. I should have called it a day with that. You know, I mean, that was a great trade. Uh, but after that trade, I got into uh, SGY. And uh, this one was really kind of disappointing because I took 5,000 shares at um, 690. And then I added 5,000 on a one minute pullback at 730. And that ended up being a mistake because now I had 10,000 shares with an average of 708. So I'll show you where I added. I added 10,000 right here on this one minute pullback. And you can see how this is a one minute pullback. This was a logical place to add. I was looking at the daily and thinking this has room up to $10. It's a former runner. It's got a history of making big moves. You can see this day here where, or these couple days where we went from $6 up to $12. So it was the right type of setup to do that on. Uh, we popped up 
from 7.30 up to a high of 7.50, resistance at the half dollar. And, you know, right there, I was up 4,200 bucks. If I could have sold on the ask, that was $4,200 profit. Uh, I was preparing my orders to sell on the break through the half dollar. And I also had the back of my mind target that if we could get through the half dollar, we might get to 775, 780, 785, 790, $8. Unfortunately, we pulled back in one minute, in a one, uh, one minute candle, all the way down to 708. You know, so this is one of those times where $4,000 of unrealized profit disappears awfully quickly. And I go down to being break even. And at that point, I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, this, this stock is still shown incredible strength today. I'll give it a second. Let's see if it bounces back. And it went to 706, popped up to 729. And then I started to think, you know what? Try to just get out break even. Just try to get out break even. Don't try to turn this into a winner. Um, I put my order on the ask. It's 708, 709. I didn't get anything filled. And then in this candle here, we dropped down to 692. And I was like, I got to sell. I mean, I can't keep holding this. And so that's where I threw in the towel then on this candle, uh, you know, where we dropped all the way down to 671. So basically to go from up $4,000 to down 2000 on a stock is, um, you know, it's not something anyone likes to do. It, it shows, uh, I mean, on the one hand, it shows a lot of, vol my, sorry, my cord's all tangled up down here. On the one hand, it shows a lot of volatility. But, um, you know, on the other hand, it tells us that this stock is just, um, you know, it's not clean. It's giving us a lot of uh, some fake outs and it's just not holding up. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I took the loss on that one. Um, in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have doubled. But, you know, by doubling and by being aggressive, I have days like Wednesday where I made $8,000. So, you know, today's just one of those days where it didn't work. And that's just the luck of the draw, I suppose. So SGY, uh, no follow through on that one. And then from there, I was starting to feel a little frustrated, a little a little agitated. But I was like, you know what? Just let it go. Don't worry about it. These things happen. So I jump into ZSAN. Z Z Z uh, and I got in this pretty high. Um, fortunately, only lost 20 bucks on it. I got in with 5,000 shares of this one at 693 right here for the first one minute candle to make a new high. Nice little pullback. We popped up to $3 and we were heavy at three. And I said, this needs to break three or I'm out. And we kind of hesitated there for a second. And then when we couldn't break that level, I just stopped out. So I ended up on 5,000 shares losing uh, half a penny, which is no big deal. So lost on that one. And then PHMD, this one came up, hitting the scanners, squeezing up. Again, on this one, I was like, okay, you know, looks good. It's a former runner. It's got a pretty clean daily chart with room up to 315. I jumped in 5,000 shares at 230, doubled to 10,000 with a 232 average. We popped up to a high of 245. And I was like, all right, this looks good, you know. But I wanted to break the half dollar of 250. Uh, really needed 20 cents of profit. So from 230 up to 250, stop was 220. And then you can see here in this candle, uh, all of a sudden we dropped back down to 226. I held for a second and then I sold on this candle here. Um, you know, and the fact that I was selling 10,000 shares obviously didn't help. There just weren't a lot of buyers. I thought this stock would get some momentum, but it didn't. So I lost $1,100 on this one. Um, you know, I... I thought I had the, the right idea, but on this one, I was just wrong. The momentum wasn't there. So at that point, I was down 2800 bucks, and I was pretty much like, I'm probably done for the day, but I would also like to keep my eyes open for a good um, reversal trade. And that's when I saw AAOI coming up on the reversal scan. And so I was watching this for a short. You can see the first, I was looking for the first first red candle after this long consecutive um, run of, of green candles. And I was kind of, kind of watching it around the half dollar of 47.50 right here, but I didn't want to get in a little too early. In any case, it drops from 47.50 down to 46.18. So it just really dropped quickly. Would have been a great trade. 
pops back up, consolidates, and this is when I start thinking, well, you know what? This is looking like it's going to be a long. I think I want to uh, you know, get in this for a reversal trade. So I'm letting it consolidate here, watching the pullback on the moving average. And when I see it start to pop up here, 46.34, I think, okay, this is looking good. It's breaking over the 20 moving average. And so I'm going to jump in. So I went ahead and jumped in right here, 46.52, uh, right around there. And I took 2,000 shares. And then it dropped all the way down to 46, uh, 45.87 lost 50 cents on it. I mean, and it was like that. So I took the loss. I was like, I thought it looked good. I didn't think I was risking 50 cents when I got into it. I thought 20 cents, which I was comfortable with, 400 bucks, but it just dropped very quickly. And so I stopped out. Obviously though, I had the right idea. I was just early. And my share size was maybe too big to hold through the pullback. So, you know, it's nice when you've got the right idea, and that tells you, yes, you're looking at the right stuff. You had the right thought, but it just, the timing was off. And um, maybe not really any fault of my own, just didn't work when I thought it was going to work. So added another $1,000 of loss on that one. And at that point, I was like, okay, I'm done for the day. Um, I'm not going to recover this loss. There'll be better opportunities probably on Monday. You know, opportunities where I can take 10 or 15,000 shares and make 50 cents and make back this $3,900 uh, in one trade. And that's not going to happen today. You know, with 2,000 shares, though, I did think from 46.50 from my entry, if we could get back up to 47.50, I could make two grand. And that was realistic. Wasn't going to get me 100% out of the hole from today, but it, it was a good potential. And obviously, it's gone even further than that. I mean, this could have been a $4,000 winner, but, you know, obviously, if I had taken. Um, if I had gotten back in a second time, I would have been risking a thousand a second time. And I try to avoid getting back into a stock that's burned me once. So, uh, in any case today, a little bit of a setback, a little bit disappointing. Um, you know, I'm not happy with closing the week on a red note, but if I, uh, step back and look at my overall statistics, I can see that even though today's red, I'm still trending exactly where I want to be. And I'm actually way ahead of my schedule. Um, you know, I'm now $28,000 away from the $100,000 goal. And I'm still planning that I'll be able to get there in, at some point in March. I think that that's realistic. So I just have to stay focused, look for the next trade, not let myself get bent out of shape uh, over this little setback today. Um, and you know, that's what I'll do. I'll jump back on the horse, uh, Monday morning, looking for a good, good momentum trade. If we continue to see choppy markets, like we saw today, then I'll have to just continue to be mindful of that. I had two red days, uh, two weeks ago now where I lost, and you can see here, um, lost 4,000 on the first day and then lost 5,000 on the second day. So you know, I've had two back-to-back -back big red days uh, during this challenge, and obviously I'd like to avoid that. But then on the following day, I made 8,000. The day after that, another 8,000. So even when I have a couple of consecutive red days that feel like a pretty big drawdown, I can still bounce back out of that pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, the goal is right up here, 100 grand, a little bit of a pullback here in the 75,000 range, and then hopefully I can get a nice... Nice strong push up to 100. You can see I, I had a really strong kind of push here from 16,000 up to 55,000, and it slowed down a little bit in the last um, you know two weeks or so. But um, I mean, I say that, but I'm still up you know 26,000 dollars in the last two weeks, so still pretty good. But you know, slowing down maybe a little bit. All right, so uh, that's it for today. Um, and uh, any of you who have questions or comments who are watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can put them in the comment section and I'll make sure I reply. Uh, for those of you in the chat room, 
Uh, we'll uh, get back to it first thing Monday morning. And I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Relax a little bit. Uh, it is definitely a good idea to uh, get your mind on something else and kind of uh, let the trading stuff simmer on the back burner. Come back to it uh, refreshed on Monday morning. All right, guys. So I hope you all have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. All right. Thanks. Let's be honest. If you made it this far, you must have really enjoyed that video. So what's stopping you? Subscribe right here and get email alerts anytime I upload new content. Until then, happy surfing.